Most patients that are treated for prostate cancer do lead a normal life and, and are pretty close to where they were before their cancer management was undertaken. Prostate cancer is a malignant growth of the prostate gland itself. The prostate gland is a gland that's in all males, only males, and it helps deliver sperm on ejaculation. Now, a cancerous growth in the prostate comes from the glandular cells, typically, and what it is it is a deregulation of those cells. They grow out of control. Most prostate cancer grows rather slowly, some a little bit more quickly, and some can spread to other parts of the body. Frankly, now, because of the screening process, it's rare we see someone with a symptom. However, if someone should present with the symptom, the local symptoms could be blood in the urine, it could be difficulty urinating, it could be pain in the pelvis. As cancer spreads outside of the prostate to other parts of the body, it's dependent on where it's spreading. Most commonly, it would spread to the bones, so bone pain is a, a presenting symptom for prostate cancer as well. The general recommendation is to start about 50 years of age and do it yearly from that point on. If there's a family history of prostate cancer, such as a father or a brother, one would try to start that a little sooner, maybe 40 to 45 years of age. There are many treatment options for prostate cancer. For the older patient with a relatively low-risk cancer, there's probably no sense in giving them anything more than carefully observing them. We call that active surveillance, watchful waiting. Other potential options are medical manipulations. You can treat prostate cancer with hormonal therapies. They are influenced by the male hormone testosterone, and you can actually block testosterone with medications or by removing the testes, and that will put the cancer asleep for some period of time, though that in itself is not curative. Another potential manipulation I like to categorize as ablative therapies. We have the ability to stick needles or probes into cancers. And at the end of the probe is an energy source, whether it be something that freezes or heats, ablates with microwave or ultrasound or electrocution. You can kill off a discrete area of, of tissue around the probe tip. And if you can accurately place that within a tumor, you can kill the tumor. The most common method of treatment for younger patients is surgery. One can do this with an open procedure. So an incision is made maybe five or six inches in size just behind the belt line, and the surgeon would go in and dissect out the prostate, then reconnect the bladder with the distal urethra. This could also be done laparoscopically. That's a little scope that's inserted through the abdominal wall, and a few other small incisions are made. And a third method is to use a robot to do the same thing. Another potential option for treatment of prostate cancer is radiation therapy. Radiation kills cancer cells by affecting their DNA, and the cancer cells are much more sensitive to the effects of radiation than normal cells. Thus, we can kill the cancer cells in the prostate, and some normal prostate will remain after radiation treatments. Many patients who are treated for prostate cancer are concerned that their sexual life is over. Well, in fact, many patients now have active sexual lives after management of prostate cancer. The new technologies, either robotic or laparoscopic prostatectomy, and some of the radiation options, because they're so precise in what they do, may offer these patients a greater likelihood of maintaining sexual potency. I believe Tufts Medical Center is a great place to come for cancer treatment, particularly prostate cancer treatment, because the team approach here is one that is longstanding. It's been well established. The communication lines are excellent, and the professional involves have the best of technology available for them, and they have the experience to use it. When a patient's been diagnosed with cancer, it's important that the patient can trust the physicians involved with their care. They really shouldn't be second-guessing anything. Now, one is always not going to have an absolute immediate bond with their physician, but they have to feel they're within confident hands, hands that are giving them good guidance, and ultimately will lead them to where they need to be as far as their management is concerned.